In this video we're going to complete example 1 which is all about using Z scores to make comparisons. In this particular example we're going to use a more visual method where we draw and label the bell curve to solve this problem. In the next video we'll complete example 2 and we'll be using the formula to solve the problem. So in example 1 it says Eugene completed two tests this week. He got a mark of 58% on his maths test and a mark of 64% on his biology test. The mean and standard deviation for the tests are shown on the table at right. In which test did he receive a better result? Use Z scores to justify your answer. Now a lot of people make the mistake of thinking the higher mark is the better result. 64% is higher than 58%, so Eugene did better in his biology test. But that isn't true because the biology test might have been an easier test than the math test. There's other factors here at play. So what we're going to do is we'll look at the math test first and we can see that in the math test the mean or average was 50% meaning on average students got a mark of 50% in that test. So we'll take our bell curve and we'll label this as the maths bell curve and the mean of 50% must go in the middle of the bell curve. Now looking at the other bell curve, this is going to be the biology bell curve. Now when we look at the table, the mean or average mark in biology was 70%. So that needs to be put in the middle, that is our mean. Remembering that the mean has a Z score of zero. Now looking at maths, we have a standard deviation of four. That means as we move to the right, we add four each time. So we're going to get 54%, 58%, and 62%. We need to label our Z scores. The first one's plus one, then plus two, then plus three. All right, now we want to move to the left of our average mark in maths. This time we're going to subtract our standard deviation of 4%. So 50 minus 4 gives us 46%. 46 minus 4 is 42%. And 42 minus 4 is 38%. And we need to write our Z scores as negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Now looking at biology, we have a standard deviation of 6. Once again, if we move to the right, we add that standard deviation. So 70 plus 6 is 76%, 76 plus 6 is 82%, and 82 plus 6 is 88%. Remembering we've got Z scores of plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. Now when we move to the left, we're going to subtract our standard deviation of 6. 70 minus 6 is 64%, 64 minus 6 is 58%, and 58 minus 6 is 52%, and our Z scores are negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Now let's look at Eugene's marks. He got a mark of 58% on his maths test. That, let's mark that on the bell curve. 58% has a Z score of positive 2. It's two steps or two standard deviations above the mean. In biology, he got a mark of 64%. 64% is actually below average. It's one step below the mean or one standard deviation below the mean. So we can see that he's done better in maths because he has a better Z score. In fact, you might remember some lessons ago, I spoke to you about the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And if we apply that rule here, we'll see some interesting things. For example, this section here in maths represents the top 2.5% of students, meaning that Eugene is in the top 2.5% of his class or maybe school. When we look at biology, this section here represents the bottom 16% of students. So 
his mark belongs with the bottom 16% of his class or school. So we're going to say that Eugene got a better mark in maths with a Z score of positive 2 as opposed to his Z score of negative 1 in biology. I'd like to point out that we only spoke about Z scores. We didn't speak about these percentages here. And to be honest, you don't need to talk about these. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.